Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Kristalina Georgieva, who is the European Commissioner for International Cooperation, Humanitarian Aid and Crisis uh, Response. We're going to begin with the situation in Mali and in the Sahel region. Uh, you've been there uh, quite recently. The European Union is trying to boost its aids to the region. What is the situation there that you saw on the ground? What is the main concern right now? Uh, Mali has been hit by a crisis in a crisis in a crisis, uh, food crisis, political crisis, and the conflict. So since the beginning of last year, people there have been uh, suffering uh, a lot from, from, from hunger and from insecurity. Uh, in fact, the... 11th of January, French intervention, if anything, is giving us hope that we may be able to help more people in Mali. Right now, we have three big problems inside Mali, getting help into the north. Even during the Islamists, we have maintained humanitarian assistance. Uh, uh, European funding uh, kept 80% uh, of the clinics running. Uh, but People are starving and uh, basic services don't work. Electricity, access to clean water. Uh, because of the Islamists, uh, kids were not immunized. We, we have a, a missiles uh, epidemics. And uh, Algeria closing the border means uh, a supply route is gone. Uh, in the north, the problems that we currently uh, hit are... Um, insecurity, the use of uh, improvised explosive devices, uh, big problem every time there is a, a, a conflict. Um, and directing, getting more help in is, remains a huge priority. Two, we have the inevitable impact of uh, ethnic tension in a country with long, long tradition. Uh, we worry a lot about um, uh, revenge killings, and against we have Tuaregs been or against others. the against the Tuaregs or against the Arabs. Uh, the white they are skins, stories. as they're called. Yes, the white skins, uh, and uh, that is something that we can only stop by raising awareness, making the Malian government more responsible, but also bringing more eyes uh, and ears uh, on the ground. We in the EU are in favor of um, uh, human rights uh, monitors. Uh, when I met with the Marian uh, Prime Minister yesterday in Brussels, uh, um, I pleaded with him to focus on this, uh, on this problem because a lot of terrible things have been done in, in the North uh, by the Islamists. But that is not an excuse for more terrible things to, to happen. Two, two wrongs don't make one one right. And then we have the impact of the rest of the uh, Sahel because uh, 167,000 people cross the borders uh, and they are in poor countries, in Burkina, in Niger, in Mauritania, caring for them, but also facilitating their return is a major humanitarian priority. But from what you're saying, people were expecting a major humanitarian crisis. It hasn't happened. I mean, the figures you're citing are not that huge, if I may use that word. Well, the, the, this is the interesting uh, story of Mali. There was a major humanitarian crisis in Mali. It was not created by the uh, French intervention, but it was there. I mean, Mali, very few people know that, but Mali is the second country after Somalia in mortality among children under five. Poor country with very fast population growth. So there are humanitarian needs, but these humanitarian needs are more of a, of a, of a consequence of this unfortunate development that hit uh, Mali. The drought last year, I mean, the whole Sahel region is so much on the front line of climate change Three major droughts in seven years, 2005, 2010, 2012. People can't even recover it. The next dry, drought is uh, hitting. Droughts that are supposed to come every 10 years, 15 years, are now 
hitting the region. So when we talk about Mali today, I want to take this as an opportunity to raise awareness of the humanitarian com conditions of the whole Sahel region. It has to be a major priority for us to help this region be more resilient because more crises are going to, to come. But you're right, it was not the uh, development, the fight against terrorism that has caused the problems uh, in, in Mali. The, the main issue is food insecurity, as it's known. 4.2 million Malians are at risk. I yes. heard 10 million in the region. This is, the, the, uh, this is a major issue. And of course, as always, it is the most vulnerable that are most severely hit. In every, every crisis I go to, 80% of the victims come from the 20% poorest uh, people. And usually, who suffers the most? Children? especially children under, under five. In Mali, we uh, Europeans, we are providing uh, treatment for 60,000 acutely malnourished children. Without us, they will perish. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the destabilization means that uh, in many places, uh, things that were there before, before the conflict, like uh, electricity or water, they're gone. We have to make sure this, this is rebuilt. I mean, you, the European Commission is providing 385 million euros development aid, 250 million, stabilization of the local authorities, 20 million, and humanitarian aid, uh, 115 uh, million. Uh, we just increased by uh, 22 million so we can tackle the needs of people help stabilize the country and uh, uh, save lives. Another uh, country uh, where the European Union has intervened in humanitarian aid is Syria. Obviously, this is a much trickier situation politically and militarily. Uh, you've recently pledged at a donor conference in Kuwait, January 30th, I believe, 100 million euros after already pledging 100 million euros. Uh, is this helping at all? Well, the um, contrast between Mali and Syria, in Mali, things are getting better. In Syria, they're, they're getting worse and, and worse. Uh, yes, our money is uh, helping, uh, providing food, medical care. Uh, during the winter, tents, blankets to some million Syrians that are in need inside the country, and we are helping the uh, the neighborhood. I mean, the uh, flight of Syrians is heartbreaking when we think of the impact it has on the neighbors. Already, eight hundred thousand people have fled in countries that are very sensitive in Jordan, in Lebanon, uh, also in in Turkey. Uh, in a month we may be hitting one million uh, refugees uh, from Syria. But what is most, most uh, uh, scary for, for the uh, humanitarian conditions there is, where is the end in sight? Without a political solution, how we bring an end to the suffering? But also one question people are raising, are you sure your aid is getting to the right people? Because there's mm. obviously government control and there are questions about how they're handling the money, who is getting it, are you concerned by that? For the European uh, funds, for those that come from our taxpayers, no, because we have taken the usual precautions to make sure help gets to those who need it. By working with organizations that are professional, we have insisted and we have gotten permission for 11 international humanitarian organizations to operate inside uh, Syria and, of course, the UN. And what we also do is we always have our own staff in these dangerous conditions visiting locations. So we insist, we insist that help is directed to people. We don't give it to governments. We don't give it in any place, least in Syria, to the government. Very quickly, uh, you're trying to raise awareness to the hidden or the silent disasters. You're launching a campaign right now because most of the disasters, unlike Mali or Syria, people are not aware of them. 91% of the cases when people suffer, we don't see on the screen. Uh, and for these disasters that are unfortunately more frequent and affect more people, 
we have to also raise support. Uh, Mali, Syria, you know, we can raise money, uh, money from governments, money from people. Uh, but uh, extreme cult in Mongolia, uh, or dengue fever, or Ebola in, in Uganda, you don't hear about it. And yet we need to be uh, sure that help is uh, underway. Uh, last question. Money is still important. Uh, recent negotiations over the next EU budget. The parliament still has a say, uh, but can you be certain that the humanitarian aid levels will be maintained? Because as you said, there are important crises to deal with, hidden or not. I trust the goodness of the European uh, people. And, but uh, there's a crisis. So. I, well, even in this, in this moment of crisis, you know what happened? 2010, 79% of the Europeans were in favor of humanitarian aid. 2012, 88% of the are Europeans you are the in favor. You need? And on that basis, yes, I'm confident that when all is said and done, and of course we are still in the process of negotiation, it will not be on the back of the poorest, most vulnerable people that we will be making savings in Europe. It's not our character. Okay, Kristalina Georgieva, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us, and thank you very much for watching this interview here on France 24.